In this video, we're gonna be looking at the cheapest stabilizer that I could find online. Why did I buy it? Well, I own a couple of other stabilizers that run more expensive. However, I've always noticed how simple the designs are for these stabilizers. They're quite brilliant. So it got me thinking, how bad could a cheap knockoff really be? So right now, we're gonna find that out. I bought this stabilizer for $24.99, which is around 32 US dollars. It came with a little carrying bag with some foam core pieces to stop it from moving around inside the case. Still, can't argue with the price though, right? Let's check some basic criteria for a good stabilizer. So number one, the build quality. Actually, despite the price, I was really impressed with the build quality. It feels solid, sturdy and capable. Even the knobs to adjust the position of the camera were both made of metal and felt pretty nice to use. The bottom weight plate allowed for more weights to be added if need be. However, the lower portion of the stabilizer, the piece that slides in and out, appeared to slide out in rough, short, sharp increments, making it really difficult to get fine adjustments when on the go. It also appeared to be slightly crooked when fully tightened. However, once it was secure, it did not move at all. So I won't hold this against it. The two nuts that secure the weights to the base plate were made of plastic and felt kind of brittle. Overall, I was admittedly impressed with the build quality. However, there were more than one telltale signs that this product was made with a low resale value in mind. Number two, ease of setup and ease of use. Compared to the other more expensive stabilizers, this took way longer to correctly balance. This was due to the mounting plates that the stabilizer uses. If you want to make slight micro adjustments to the stabilizer so that it stays vertical, then you're out of luck. Try and move this in a small way and it either won't move at all or it will move so much that you'll completely unbalance your rig and you'll have to start all over again. Once I did get it correctly stabilized, I dare not take my camera or my lens off of the mounting plates ever again. Number three and probably the most important question of all, how stable is it? I found that this was actually all right. The thing to remember with non-motorized stabilizers that use a counterweight system is that a huge part of how stable the results are hinges on how good you actually are in operating it. I found that it takes quite a bit of practice compared to gimbals, which often use three motors. Here are some shots using the stabilizer. These are straight out of the camera with no high frame rates used and no warp stabilizer either. See what you think. As you can see, this is a usable stabilizer that works and works well in most scenarios, albeit with a bit of practice. Hopefully this has helped you to make an educated decision based on your needs. In the description, you'll find a list of links to where you can buy stabilizers similar to this, along with links to all of the equipment that I use to make this video. If you like the video, then don't forget to give it a like. It really helps me out in beating the YouTube algorithm. Comment and let me know if you'd be happy to pick up this stabilizer for the asking price. Finally, subscribe and hit the bell icon to stay updated with all of my future uploads. As always, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.